This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Michael El Shami with another episode uh, from the series Hands On. And it's a pleasure today to uh, host Dr. Neil Bhatia, who's one of my colleagues, who's going to discuss uh, CO2 insufflation to facilitate epicardial access. Hi, Dr. Bhatia, how are you? Hi, Michael, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Good, thank you. We're looking forward to your. Um, a presentation on CO2 insufflation. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about when did you start um, using this technique and tell us a little bit about this technique and your experience with it? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, just a little background information. Um, uh, this technique actually came out uh, in, 20, uh, in the early to, uh, 2014, 2013. And the initial thought was this was for a lariat to gain ac access to the epicardial space. And what these group of investigators, this was Adam Greenbaum and Robert Letterman, they actually perforated the right atrial appendage and put a microcatheter uh, through that perforation and then injected CO2 um, to, uh, in to insufflate the pericardial space. More recently, Silverbauer actually decided to perforate the small terminal coronary sinus veins, as I thought these would be very low pressure when called little bleeding, and use that to uh, gain access to the pericardium by inserting a microcatheter and ultimately uh, insufflating the pericardial space with CO2. Um, so I've actually gone completely to doing epicardial access using uh, CO2 insufflation. It's actually quite easy. Uh, we are already kind of masters in getting access to the coronary sinus, whether it's from the shoulder or the femoral approach. And so I have converted all my epicardial cases to this. Um, in terms of what you kind of need, and we're going to go over this in some uh, pictures, but first you need your sheath to gain access to the coronary sinus. That can be the agilis or visigo, whatever kind of long sheath you use to gain access to the CS. And then I usually like to use a larger coronary guide catheter, like a JR guide or an MP guide to kind of steer in the coronary sinus. Once I get in the CS with those catheters, uh, you want to use a long uh, wire, uh, like a coronary wire, like a, a whisper wire, which everyone is probably very familiar with, truma wire, and insert that with the microcatheter already in uh, uh, through that. And that's these are very small microcatheters, like 1.8, 1.9 French. And you gain you put this all the way to the end of the uh, CS in an exchange for CTO wire. And you can just perforate through the vein into the pericardial space and advance the microcatheter through the pericardial into the pericardium and then inject CO2 um, that way. Uh, there are a lot of ways you can inject CO2. We like to use this kind of handle tool called the commander. And I'll go over it briefly, but it's very easy to use. And once you inject CO2, then you can just get epicardial access. So here's... Um, Here's us where we have gained access into the coronary sinus. And here we have our microcatheter here. And here you can kind of see we're kind of at this kind of very small branch. And so I've advanced the microcatheter a little bit further out. And then I've just uh, inserted the CTO wire. And you can see I easily get into the pericardial space. And once I gain access to pericardial space, I just slightly advance the microcatheter with a little clockwise motion and I can get into the pericardium. And are these uh, CTO wires just stiff to easily just perf a vein and go into the pericardium? Absolutely. So there's really kind of two, you know, they have these labels, 20 grams, 40 grams, and that's just the amount of tension it takes for the wire to start to bend. I use a 20 gram wire and that seems to work very well. Um, but any kind of CTO wire will easily perforate through these veins. And, and then, then one, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. And then you verify, you know, your uh, pericardial or epicardial location just by looking LAO and RAO and just um, looking at the, that you're surrounding the heart. Absolutely. You'll see, um, you know, if you use a longer wire, you can get it wrapped around multiple times in LAO. But as you can see here, I, I've, um, I've inserted the microcatheter and then I injected a little bit of contrast. And here you can clearly see that the contrast is in the pericardium. So I'd like to do that just for confirmation. Okay. Once I do that, I start injecting the CO2. 
And as you can see here, you can clearly see in this left lateral position, this very nice area um, that's been highlighted for you to stick. And the great thing about this, if you want to do an anterior stick or more an inferior stick, it's very easy, very easy. You can adjust your wire to anywhere you want to gain access. Okay. And you just, and you, what I do is I usually load the wire onto, I use a micropuncture needle, but I just insert the wire uh, and I load the wire on the needle. And then once I felt a pop, I just insert the wire and then take out the needle. There's some kind of recoiling of the RV. And so you want to just take out the needle as soon as you gain access. Yeah. That, that's a very neat technique. And um, yeah, so you're going to the setting. That's what I wanted to ask. So how easy it is for someone who's never done this to set it up in her or his lab? Um, what do you need to set it up? Honestly, this is kind of already in our workflow already, to be honest. We already gain access. We already get access to the CS for a lot of these VT cases, uh, inserting like a EP star or a MAPA catheter to map the coronary sinus. All you need to use is just some guide catheter, a regular kind of whisper wire, kind of floppy coronary wire. Insert that with a micro catheter, get to the end of a branch, and then replace with a CTO wire. And then uh, put the micro catheter pericardium and then uh, inject CO2. This is the, uh, this is the uh, setup we use for CO2. This, uh, this, they have a sterile kind of pouch for this, but uh, you put that um, on the table in the sterile pouch and connect this sterile kind of three-way uh, system. And it's very easy, just press the button, the CO2 goes in the syringe, you then place in this syringe, and then this goes out the microcatheter. I put about, I do about maybe 80 cc's of CO2, but you can do more or less once you feel like you've gained a big enough window. This is just like a demonstration of how easy it is to use. Here's the button you press, and then you turn on the pressure to give the CO2. And here you can already see the syringe already is filled up. This is me struggling uh, on the table, but mm -hmm. you can kind of see, uh, you can press it in there and then you switch the stopcock again and then that'll go to the pericardium. Okay. That's very neat. And um, so you mentioned this before, but now you say you just do this for all your epicardial access. You rarely do it, you know, dry tap anymore. Right, yes. And I, I mean, it's, it's I, I think the biggest rate limiting step for this is um is engaging in the coronary sinus. As you know, you know, most of the time it goes very easily, especially now that we have ice and we're more facile with this. But this, you know, if you're having trouble, that could definitely add um some more time. I would say this on average adds about 15 to 20 minutes, I think, for a VT case. But probably definitely worth it because uh, that 15 minutes probably ensure like a safer entry into the pericardial space. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, I think for people who've had previous epicardial access, instead of wasting your time where there might be a lot of adhesions, this is also a great way to see if there's any open pockets for you to stick or if it's even more toward epicardial. And most of the time you just do it via the femoral route. You don't you don't have to get IJ access to get into coronary sinus. No, I mean, I have not done that. Now I have, uh, I think, but if you're having trouble, I think going IJ is very easy to do. You tend to get uh, in the coronary sinus much easier uh, via the IJ approach. And so if you need to do that, that's totally reasonable. Um, it just kind of depends what your comfortable comfort level is and uh, what the ease is sometimes. Okay. And uh, probably uh, my last question to you, have you ever had to do a right atrial appendage exit? Do you think that's ever needed uh, or most likely uh, coronary sinus since you can get into it the majority of the time, that would be the, the way to to go? I haven't done uh, a right atrial um, uh, appendage exit yet. Uh, there are some cases that we might have to do that that are coming up, but I think for most cases, you can get in the coronary sinus fairly easily. And I think you know, when you're struggling or maybe it's a patient with a CS lead, sometimes it can be difficult because there tends to be some stenosis of the CS, but I think most of the time it should not be an issue. Um, the only caveat I have about this is, you know, when you are injecting CO2, uh, if a patient goes into VTVF, remember they're you're creating this um, this massive impedance uh, based on the CO2, and so you might have to defibrillate them from their ICD rather than externally. Yeah. That's the only uh, thing. I mean, you know, we're doing this for VT ablation, so that might come up. But uh, well, thank you. Good. Yeah, that's a very important uh, tip. Um, uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank you uh, 
for uh, sharing your expertise and all these uh, important tips and tricks to um, facilitate uh, epicardial ablation using CO2 insufflation. Thank you very much Thanks, for being with us today. Thank you.